Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Meta Epsa to, to the Meta Agency Valorant. I'm Digital Cast, and of course, with me, Potato Fries. And of course, game one that was done and dusted. Della Cell, pretty decent win, 13 5, commanding lead. But that's all done and dusted. Map two now Glen Waverly Secondary College versus Hopper's Crossing Secondary College. This should be a much closer game for those ones there. Obviously, second seed versus eighth seed. It went to show, and overall, the second seed come out on top. But these two, I think, are neck and neck for third and fourth seed in their respective ladder. If I have a quick second and third there, second and third. Yeah, two, yeah. they're second and tired. third seed. So yeah. and same scoreline as well. So this will get them mm -hmm. the extra step ahead into the above seeding. And this is literally determining who is second seed at the moment now. So just waiting for these players. They look like they're ready to go. And otherwise, should hopefully be. A good matchup indeed. And of course, this week's map rotation is none other than Split. And we are proudly sponsored by Torrent University and Optus here at Meta yep. High School Esports. So guys, make no mistake. We are already seven weeks in. And at this point, all teams have to give it their hardest. Because literally, the difference between first seed and second and third is basically one game at this point. One game win. So yeah, man, the later we get into these weeks, uh, we are seeing more players starting to get, you know, while weaker teams get weeded out and are strong to survive at the very end, going over towards the national finals. Okay, now I think all teams are in the lobby and they are ready, so we should be loading into Agent Pick Select real soon. And Potato, predictions, let's hear it. Um, So just double checking there. So Glenn Wavery were on the defense, correct? Uh, Glenn Waverly, you know what? Let's just... Double check that. Sometimes these things are a little bit finicky. Uh, Glenn Waverly, yes, on the defense. Hopper's crossing on attack. Okay, Glenn Waverly, the defense crossing on the offense there. Um, well, I'm not too familiar with these player wise. They're both second, third seed overall, but I think at this point, just going to come to those picks. Wise might have to see what determines life from there. But just on paper, I'll probably be favoring um, the Glenn Waverly. We do like the underdogs. They are the third seed. And of course, I'm mm -hmm. the second seed of Hopper's Crossing, so on that defense side. Yeah, it's fair. Yeah, it's fair. Naturally, though, you would probably have to favor the defense side starting things off on split. But you know mm -hmm. what? I'm going to oppose you and go for Hopper's Crossing. Because they, despite on the attack side, if they can put up a few solid rounds, that makes their defense all the more easier to close things out. Okay, finally, Agent Pixelect, and let's see what agents they will be choosing, as you spoke about earlier. Indeed so. So, not too sure. Curious what let's say they're looking like. It seems like, like that Hopper's Crossing are already pretty um, consistent with their picks at the moment now. So you've got mm. the Omen with Poi, Smebbles with the Viper, Jandra with the Sky. The double heals, that one's that one's an interesting composition to make it work. That's going to help for the second half, but the first, like, they might want some more flashes. They don't, they have one flash in the hands of Omen. So really, no, sorry, Sky Flash, excuse me, I'm absolutely... Somewhere else at the moment now, but otherwise towards the uh, Glen Waverly Sun defense there. Similar compositions, just not favoring the double heals to so the Breach versus yeah. Sky and the lockdowns, and as well as the, um, the util from Killjoy there. So pretty even picks across the board, um, but I am actually liking, so can we myself there, probably um, Opus Crossing's picks a little bit more. So the double heals... That's really hard to work um, because it's great to have double healers and it's great to keep them going along and all sorts of the team. However, you are like lacking you know, util Choose and damage from those points. And at this point, they do have the Viper Walls to cover site. The Omen Smokes are there. And I suppose they have the raised damage. So if Raze does well for them, then they'll definitely help overall. So not having the second Duelist could be a bit problematic, but the util is definitely there. Over towards mm. the other side, they also have the one Duelist's Jet. The Breach Flash is going to be pretty useful. The util from... Killjoy is probably on par with that of Viper. So, look pretty even across the board. I guess it's going to come down to how will they play them. But I do like, um, for your team's pick, the Hoppers crossing that yeah. a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, and you know, I, I'll say this. It's solid duelist on both sides here. And there's no defensive like information sensible for Hoppers crossing. But that's why they start off on the attack. If they are on the defense, they probably just have to go a little bit more proactive using Sky Flashes or maybe the Wolf to get early intel. But that's not the, the full point here, okay? 
looking at Hopper's Crossing on the attack, I can totally see their Sage playing with that raise. Just the lockdown angles, the slow orb plus the paint shells, they should be good to do a lot of damage. Poi, he's the secondary smoker, just like in the previous game, Dallas Cell, when they had Viper and Omen. One is the proper smokes, and the other is just the Diversion Lurker. But plus now, they have Jam Jam, the triple guiding lights as as uh, Sky, as well as the AoE heal. I think Hopper's Crossing, they should be poised to take at least either the attack side or this game by a decent margin. Utility heavy composition. Yeah, um, but I will say this wise, um, I don't really think there's much advantage for either side. They do have the flash to take sides with the omen smokes as well. The Viper was going to be pretty good on offense. So I think the Killjoy and Viper is going to be pretty useful for their respective sides. Killjoy on the defense and the Viper probably on the offense for cutting off sides. But both are great on either plants and might just see how well these games turn out. But so far, Looks like Hopper's Crossing going to go through towards a mid lurk. They're not really favoring, trying to be breaking the wall. Maybe have one there, but looks like it's going to go back towards A as the original plan. And the Killjoy is there on the A site, ready to lock it down. And of course, the Omen ready for the pre-fires as soon as they peek Ooh. through. So if they don't read this swing on Heaven and no, they're backed off. Yeah, look, they 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 they, they may have you know showed shown some aggression over towards mid and etc. But now there's the Vipers come through that locks off essentially all the left side and they just run straight on for free as a team. The paint shells are blocks off screen, slow orb as well. Very clean sight take by Hoppers Crossing post plant five on five. This is going to get brutal. This will indeed. Let's smoke trying to storm as best as they can. Very good, interesting post plant angles. They might try and go for screens take here if they peek too early. But, of course, they're just waiting out the retake, making sure they line up accordingly, and they get these flashes on par, and now they're burst Okay, out. good spot by uh, Iconic, and, and they are trading back and forth now, but the post blind, remember, the spike is sticking away, it's all just a fist fight, fist fight on the site, and you blink it, you miss it, and oh my god, Glenn Waverly, they just swarm on with pure bodies and bullets, they take back the site, three players standing, they've used to come through. Happy about that one. They won that retake very cleanly. Um, only losing two and a bit of damage onto Sage. So that is something else from there. It looked like they had pretty good post plans for it, but ultimately mm, they were just a bit of. too condensed. They couldn't really trade off each other, and for some reason they like stuck with movement. So they were stuck on site, yeah. and they just had to know the kills to favor them. Like the quick pick from Iconic from Heaven. In the mm. opening, someone should be jiggling heaven like always to get the damage and then wait for them to jump down to try and get the peak. But 1 0, pistol's a mm. pistol, and they're gonna right. have plenty of money for this one. And looks like um, they're just gonna go for a quick B play here to try and wreak havoc. Now, 777 seven, seven. should be able to get some damage early on, and that paint shot forces them back. And look at that, off of utility, utility heavy competition. I was saying earlier, Hopper's Crossing, they take B main essentially for free. And off of that, the boom bot, 777, seven, seven. he's on 35 now. He needs to heal to bail him out. Sage has to rotate over. More information gathering utils to come through. That Tasmanian oh. Tiger at least gets popped out of the air. And now the slow ups are through. So it's defense, it will slow their push for the time being, and leaving high shot point blank with the judge to do more damage. There's the heal just on par. Now 7 7 can really hold it. There's the first and the wall bang onto Sky as well. Another one, a headshot. He's just lining them up. Just like fish in a barrel and they're just walking the pre fire there. But what can you do without armor and against a marshal? Did Not they take much. the. Do they take the orb inside B main at the very least? Oh, does it matter because Iconic, he's sitting behind the metal box, sprays down three players, triple, flawless round now for the defenders. Hoppers crossing, okay, fair enough. You know, I'm still rooting for them. This is their proper buy round. It is indeed. Early days, win that 2-0 as expected for sides, and I'm surprised 777, I'm um, going for the B main push there. Went for the headshot angles? I don't know why. You, like, as soon as you hear that classic shot, you go, oh, they're on full eco, no armor. Let's just get the body shots. But apparently you just wanted to flex them with a little bit of headshots there, but eventually managed to reposition and somehow opted to hold the angle and not shoot the bomb buddy when it was coming at them. That's something else. But, you know, got the anti eco and now they're really going to have to try and play well and smart to get these picks. They don't really have to win the round um, for... Uh, uh, excuse me, Glenn, Waverly, they just have to make sure that they can take some guns away with them into the next round and upset their economy. And if they do win the round, then it's even more bonuses for them. 
Oh yeah, look, that's why it's called the uh, bonus round, isn't it now? Finally, utility is coming through, and once again, Sky just in in spite in as a replacement for Sova essentially on split, and it's it's working out decently well. Ropes has been more or less cleared, and this is attracting attention over towards mid of the map. Although four rifles, they are starting to aggress over towards heaven. Great paranoia manager, he's blind. Poi, Poi takes him down easily. Although the paint shells, I think, may have done a little bit of damage. No, he does escape. But High Shot has taken his position now with the Judge as the attack is now running over towards A. Guiding Light comes through. Iconic falling back, just holding the sides at angle. Has the Aries. Good spray down on one. One on one trade. But again, trading back by Happy Gold Bar over towards A ramp. 22 HP though. He has the crossfire with 777. And as you can see, Smebbles just dueling on site. Happy Gold Bar takes his opportunity and engages. Mystical Curve and the Sky, 2v2 now, they're making this happen, they have, but they have to do damage! They, those Nazwan Grenades, it pinches Mystical Curve under Heaven, high shot, easy kill, 2 on 1, and what a shot! He couldn't decide which gun he wanted to use, pulls out the Judge finally, and one pumps Jam Jam, Deary, me, Glenn Waverly, they are putting in the works! And that's the bonus round, going their way! Uh, his, indeed, Hoppers are uh, gonna have to rethink a few things if they buy that is a mistake and a half of them they just have to go for the eco they're just gonna have to grit their teeth and force another one um for the next round and see if they can't build some ults to try and stop a side but man they were playing that extremely well there you could see that they were trying to go through the um the ropes take that used double util for it i'm surprised they didn't use some for mail just to hold the stall but the smoke was there so they wanted to clear ropes make sure no was lurking in it so they could try and take it and wrap on towards a but Fantastic picks from them, and of course that one pick from Omen to try and hold on strong, but, you know, had good post plants, and the jiggle from Breach at the end, just unsure which gun to pick up, but ultimately the judge paid off, so, 3-0, and they're stuck on an eco again for Hopper's Crossing, but we'll see if they can't try and take some guns away, they do have plenty of sheriffs, so there's a little bit more money available, and... Looks like they're just going to go for mid again, but they're not really contesting the wall, they're just going quiet this round, seeing who's playing where. Yeah, look, now it's their turn to do damage, and this is their pseudo-bonus, you could say. Okay, it's a save, really. But so far, they haven't made much noise, and it's just causing the defenders to rotate onto A, off of A, but still, three players stack, almost four, over towards B here, and Hopper's crossing. Oh, I don't know. If you go over towards B, you have to start off with some huge frags. High shot, and the jet as well. They're already poised to play flash and dash. Some damage is good. A plant's ideal, but once that... Util comes through, they'll know exactly what's happening, and 777, he's the man to, to do most of the damage here. Although, Ooh. he does get st struck a little bit, and Boombot does get destroyed this time. The flashes are through, high shot, chimes in, and it's just a complete kill box right now. They're stuck in B main, they can't go anywhere, all top can't be taken. 777 runs out of ammo, doesn't matter, manager's gonna chime in. Jam Jam, last player standing, gets his head taken off. 4-0 flawless now for Glenn Waverly. They got that early momentum, the 4-0. Is looking quite promising early on, but again, still early days. They now have the second full buy ready for Hopper's Crossing, and they really need to be winning this one here, because each round they let slip is another eco, which could yeah. be another potentially round loss, and it's just going to keep on adding up from there. There looks like they're two orbs away from two ults, and actually, there's one from Sky as well, so... So quick picks here, we'll get them some ults and they'll get the momentum in the round. But again, so we're going for these mid defaults. I know the walls there, they have the weaponry this time to actually break the block. So that's going to help them get a bit of a mid presence. And Iconic is going to shut down the A play under Jam Jam and spot out the Bomb Buddy as well. Yeah, the boom bot, it, it, it does get popped. That's a great paranoia of the point. It catches Iconic, actually. Iconic, dearie me. He had the right idea, but misses the shots. Turbo the Hobo strikes back. Number's still even two on two. And there's the ultimate you talked about at the start. The uh, showstopper, it's available now. But he has to stay alive. Great shot to 777. And Paytel as well. This should force high shot back and rotation for manager already coming. They know he's in ropes. And the site's been taken, though. What is going on? Happy gold bar. He gets two kills delivered onto his plate there. It's all down to the last player, Sage. And at this point for Hopper's Crossing, it's probably in your best interest to save, unless you can isolate the one-on-ones. They're double-picking them, though. Mr. Curve does get the first kill, has to self-heal. It's still a ball, but they are pushing him. They don't want him to survive. The more damage they do, the better the advantage. Another flash, he's blinded, spraying to the wall. They run right at him. Oh my god, this is punishment being dished out right now by Glenn Waverly. Absolutely brutal. I can't believe they didn't clear the back corner. Again, another simple mistake. You have to clear the back 45. It's just one angle, one pre-fire. And unfortunately, they just didn't make it happen. Killjoy on side got, I think, three there from Happy Gold Bar to completely shut down. Well, I think, no, it's just over two and then got the trade back in the end. Yeah, so 
the two quick picks there because it was looking promising for them. Tobo found two kills out on towards the A site and no mm. one was there. And honestly, that Omen Paranoia, I thought it was done and dusted um, for Glenn Waver in that defense. Like, that was an insane lineup to be hitting there. And Smebbles, actually giving the Ray of Sunshine, gonna find one. I know I got oh. one, but the spam finds... Oh, Manager finds two and can easily dip away. And of course, the teammate is there, ropes ready for the counter play. Although, Omen is still lurking over towards mid there on the defense. He may be able to go huge here. Manager is there to chime in as the paint shots come through. They know at least Tobo is over towards the angle. Great initial frag, but has to get a second. Missile curve chimes and Iconic's gone. Great flash, that's two seconds. High One shot, enemy, gets that right. single frag. But once again, another trade back down to Happy Gold Bar. Having to go huge again, even bigger now. The resurrection on Mystical Jam Jam's back. But bear, but bear in mind, Happy Gold Bar has the Killjoy lockdown. He can still win this round. Yeah, um, could go for it. Could go for the save, have those ults as of later. I think, actually, yeah, using that lockdown will force them to use their ults, um, and or, at the very least, hold the angles and get some quick picks, uh, or some very scarce angles, so that could be key to try and take some guns away in the economy. Great Tied start. The first onto Smebbles, and might even singles out Jam Jam, and exactly. now it's a 1v1, the lockdown's gonna stall B main, and they can just happily tick down the time, and Although just get... It's planted over towards the main there. Exactly. It doesn't matter. Happy goal bar. Baits out the shot. Mystical curve misses. Great headshot. Great triple. Insane clutch. They, that The ultimate was worth it. He isolated the angles. And now Hopper's crossing. Oh, they can't get anything started on the attack. Oh, dearie me. That looked done and dusted for them. The 1v3. They had that completely there. And they just... Let it slip. Um, the opening pick was unfortunate, but as soon as that one goes through, Sky holding into that corner, I I could not believe you held onto that angle there. That's the next angle you clear from that one there. You, you've already cleared the yeah. drop down because you know they're going wide, and then you're thinking, oh, well, if the bomb's planted here, then they're probably going to be lurking this close corner. And uh, just did so. Well, actually, it's planted for default. Sorry, yeah, my bad. But Sort of default, but it's actually because um, she used the, uh, the the Tasmanian Tiger. So at that distance, you can sort of just guess where it's being uh, pumped out from. And of course, mm. I'll talk about that around a little bit later. As we can see right now, Hopper's Crossing just going for his A heavy stack. They've given up on taking mid control and everything. But look at the defenders. They're starting to go for a long flank as well. The Omen over towards Heaven, though. I think he's made it through the Viper Wall. Iconic gets, gets taken down regardless. Tobo oh. still on there and very aware. Long distance with the Spectre. Jam Jam takes down another great round thus far. Spike goes down. Jam Jam is just behind the corner. He can't take shots. Manager and triple seven. Now they have ultimates. There is a resurrection. I think you get one off. They can equalize the numbers. But it's no small feat. Yeah, no one is available for resing. Two of them under heaven. One at close elbow. They have to fight for that one. Seven Great start. He's going to find one, but so far... Oh, Man, dude, he can't be doing that. The last one on towards elbow. You blink, and suddenly they've equalized the numbers. 1v1, Tobo. This is a chance to put one on the board right now. For Hopper's Crossing, he has to invest the ultimate, and there's a great updraft, but he's it's on one HP, both players, essentially one shot now. Tobo has the distance advantage, spot out the shoulder, easy kill. Oh my god, he had to go huge here, but finally, one on the board. This could be an even first half, but hey look, it's still early. It is definitely early, and the fact that they almost brought that back again, you know, they let the 1v3 slip this time, they were not going to let that one slip, but... Even then, those angles, they were just not ready to be traded through. And Manager hitting that falling headshot onto Viper was absolutely insane to keep going on from there. So that's going to be a whole lot of fear factor. But they finally found some aim, at least. AKA Tobo could be trying to clutch up for them. But, man, they really need to try and get some rounds down pat here. Because, judging from those defense-wise, obviously Sage is great for stalling. So is Viper. So that's one on either side. But their mid-take is going to be a little bit hard if they're going for that sort of play. Sage will probably go towards mid, so one of the sides will be a little bit open, and they'll have to try and play the retakes from it. But look at this, the Bombay trying to go on through, and they're about to wrap on towards the B-side, but fantastic paranoia to answer back, and can easily teleport back towards default, then you cut off the angle, and yeah. Hopper's crossing. That was, it was a great initial opener. Jam Jam now gets the second. Sage resurrection. Sage slows and heals are off the table now for the, the defenders. Glenn Waverly. They have to play really careful now. Tobo. Shoulder gets spotted out. It doesn't matter. Still gets the initial kill on so Happy Gold Bar. Walks right through the smoke. Tobo is just on absolute tear right now. All down to triple seven. 1v5. Has to ace it to win it. 
Hey, look, man, damage is good, but uh, I don't rate his chances to be quite good. No, the, je the jellyfish. Oh. The jellyfish knows that there's somewhere on the rotate. Do they read this? Right. Yes, they will. Tobo's done. And now 1v4 for triple seven. Go smoke off the heaven take. Probably try and bait them. They're wrapping on the screens. Pushing in through heaven, but Jam Jam and of course Omen there to whittle them down. Two to six now. So four rounds behind for Hopper's Crossing. You know, uh,. Earlier on, Hopper's Crossing, I was going to say, they were playing defaults, and a, a few rounds there, when they were on, were on the cheaper buy, they just scrapped that idea and went straight in for hard side executes. That round there, I wouldn't really call it a default. Okay, you know what? It is a default, but instead, yeah, Tobo just going on an absolute tear. He took one player down initially over towards B and just works his way up mid. He gets a triple in total, I believe, maybe a quadra? Don't quote me on that. And one player alone, he's getting these kills. That can't be happening if you're going Waverly right now. You can't get be letting your players get picked off one at a time. Although 777 offers paranoia, goes to a one, misses the second right click, and so far, still one on one trade. The defenders should probably fall back for the time being. High shot, though, has the judge, and we know how much damage that shotgun can do at these ranges. We definitely towards so though so towards look at stage. They yeah, pushed. Gonna read the omen from the bait around, but oh, excuse me, apologies, folks. And the push-up play from Sage that was interesting, but unfortunately they pre-fired the angle. Another one from Happy Golba, and they're just playing these one v ones, trying to get the man advantage. And so far, Hopper's Crossing are capitalizing off of it, and now they can go out towards the B site where it's gonna be free all the time. They could really have to rely on Iconic to find some good timing here, but the slow is going to stop that. Now they're on the B site. It's four players alive, a 2v4 for Glen Waverly, and boy, oh boy, that's going to be a clutch and a half that make it happen, but it doesn't look promising with a Judge and a Phantom. Yeah, well, at least they have a rifle to play with, although this it's a bit of a crossfire at three separate angles. Smebbles, he looks the wrong way. High shot gets one initial open art. And now has to check up rafters. I can't believe that flash actually works, but now it's all down to Iconic 1v2. Picked up a rifle for his troubles, but they know exactly where he dropped down to. And if anything right now, Tobo, he's really starting to step up his game. This is, I think, three triple kills back to back. Yeah, they are. And he's on top of the lobby at the moment. 13 and 7. Absolutely sweating for their team. And of course, on the other side, very even margins across the board. Most of them with seven kills, a couple of them with nine, so couldn't get much closer spread than that. Um, but six to three, three rounds behind is, of course, Hopper's Crossing. Try and make it the seven five, oh, nice. uh, if not the six all. So. Well, they are on a, a steady path to getting that 6 all and 777 there, you know. I'm not too sure what he could see holding that angle, but his shoulder was exposed, and he was staring into the box, essentially. Tobo once again opens things up, the paint shells, and forces the, the breach off of the default as he aggresses right on. Although that blind it may be huge here, indeed, high shot, blinds a few players, gets a double for himself, so locking down the angle, another to come through. Oh, this is so good, the power of breach, and it's three two-second flashes. The spike is down on the site, and now the resurrection onto, onto 777. 2v5 now. Oh, look, I don't know. They're, they're trying to pick off Iconic over towards mid, and he's holding on. He can still TP off of the angle. I think it's insistent, though, to take this fight. It is indeed, but he's at least read the mid flank. High shot with a 4k. It could opt for the ace if they spot out, and they know Jam Dan's back. Noodle, I think. He's going for it. He's going for it. They're telling him exactly where he is. On the high shot. Yeah, it looks the wrong way, and Iconic has the trade him. A little bit anticlimactic there, but it's not bad. 7-3. Hopper's Crossing, if they can get one more round to make it four to eight, maybe, to finish off the first half, that's pretty good. Defense is yeah. defense, side of map at the end of the day. Yeah, it is indeed. They have pretty good lineups as well for defense. You know, vibe is pretty great. Same thing with Sage. I think they'll be worried about, like, either do they put Sage at mid to try and lock it down, um, or do they have a Sage on another side and just have Viper with Sage um, on either sides to really try and get denser there? Because mm. I think one angle be open for them generally as a first push. But they have pretty good retakes there with Omen Smokes, Omen Teleport as the Intel, and Sky Flashes, as well as the Showstopper ready to go on through. But speaking of Showstoppers, they have it as of right now. And looks like they're going to try out for the A site. Uh, Tobo, the uh, Boomba obviously sees nothing as Iconic executes him. Oh, triple straight down through the Viper Wall, Iconic. He's getting these kills fed to him. Down to last player now. This is just... 
punishment and prejudice. The rolling thunder, just just for that quadra kill for iconic snibbles. You poor man. Full flawless round now for Glen Waverly. This is pretty good. Eight to three. This is brutal. If you are a Hopper's Crossing fan. Oh, can I just say it play well? Back of A, they went, you know, we're going to condense, we're going to keep it simple, let's just go to a site, and honestly, as soon as Glenn Wavy saw the one, they saw the rest of the back of them, so it's almost like they're trying to read them now, like that they know that they're just condensing and sticking to one site, so they're just pushing the majority of the map, Omen holding top mid, Sage ready to swing and help them from mail, and looks like Jet holding the B main as well, they just got almost all the map down pat, actually, to give the B angle, but for most part, Omen on top of the wall at Sage here. They just got all the aim factor, all the confidence, and Hopper's Crossing really just have to find these early entries here to help the side push. Uh, earlier on, actually, for that A main, the A ramp push there, the Guiding Light, it didn't actually clear all the way up, so and it popped, so you got no intel for that. The Boom Bar, obviously, it wasn't poised to clear the angle, so they had no intel Iconic was there, so it was, it was a bit of a misplay as well. But regardless, once again, same old story, high shot, breach flashes, gets a double, Finally, boy, we'll trade him back. The wall bang through that little wooden uh, wall there. But look, Hopper's Crossing, they can't really make their way onto the B side. The Viper Wall, it blocks off the lower half of sites. But bear, bear in mind, if this is a play, if, if this is a play in heaven, they can still see the, the, the players crossing out, I'm pretty sure. Oh no, Iconic, here's a rotation. Wants a pick, though. Does get spotted out. Still gets the kill regardless. Paranoia and a TP to safety. Sage Hill to bail him out. Four on two. Hopper's Crossing, not the best way to end the first half. No, it is not. Wow. Apparently they have to win a 2v4. Going for the intel, they know they're still back mid. Uh, not too sure what kills are favoring, but Mystical would have to get two kills here and all the orb and a kill just to get the res available to make it a 3v3, or otherwise they're relying this, on that aim factor. That killjoy is locked down. It locks off most of main, but if, if they want to plot this spike, they have to go on right now. There's only 10 seconds left, and look! Oh, the missile gets the tain! It's only down to an omen left. Five seconds, can't get the plants. And dearie me, it's a clean up right now from, from a Glenn Waverly. Switching sides. Absolute stomp through. First half, 9-3 again, another scoreline, and... We could be seeing another similar result here on this map, but man, Hopper's Crossing, they are just having no momentum at all. They had those three rounds in a row and then they just let it crumble. It seemed like Glen Waverly were just, you know, having one, one round and were just swinging everything and holding onto those angles, no worries. The mm. fact they ticked down the time a whole lot was something else because um, they fought mid for too long, a little bit yep. of, over, almost out towards a B site and then went, nope, we're going to go straight towards A and... At that point, there's just no time left, but they really oh. have to focus on, right now, winning this pistol, Hobbs Crossing. Losing that one will be a 10-3, and then it's up to them if they do the anti-force, and, of course, going through, see if they can't try and make that one work. Apologies on the wrong side. Well, look, Jam Jam was the, was the lone player trying to hold down the B side. He just he just guns down instantly. And look at how much control and positioning right now Hopper's Crossing uh, don't have, actually, sorry, because it's Glenn Waverly on the attack now over towards screens. That Jet should be able to get to, to get this initial frag. Triple seven sprays down Mystical. Gets a double. Oh, dearie me. Hopper's Crossing 2v5. This pistol round just not going their way at all. Triple seven. Handing aim down pat. Triple. Triple seven, indeed. Now, double digits on the board for Glenn Waverly. Triple seven with the triple kill, and look, seven rounds ahead. They won the pistol. Hopper's crossing. I'm not too sure what their plans are like, but it better be a good one. Looks like the full eco. They're going to risk the 11 3 the tipping point, and hopefully, they can try and win some back after then. Mm. You know, well, anti they are the full buy to the 11 4, and then, man, they have to win seven in a row to tie it yeah. up, but. They are on the defense side of, of split, so that's actually something going for them. They have Viper to delay. You have the paint shots as well. Not that it really matters. It's just triple seven. The judge going in so deep, and the judge it two pumps Tobo. Although Poi does strike back, and he he's a little bit greedy there, trying to go for the gun. High shot punches him dead hard. Mystical curve. Okay, you win that engagement finally. As high shot got once again a little bit greedy, but one by one. Look at the positioning, look at the angles, how much map control right now Glenn Waverly has. Spikes down, Mystical with the Judge to 1v3, retake this from three separate angles. It's pr I'm pretty sure this is going to be going to 11 to 3. Oh, oh okay. Indeed. The 1v3, unfortunately, they can't pull that one back for Hobbers Crossing on, like, Glenn Waverly. But, 11 to 3 now, that was expected. They went for the anti-curve, so... 
It's all the marbles now on the line for Hoppers Crossing to win this round. If they don't, 12 to 3, and they're stuck without any economy left. It'll be absolutely brutal for that one if it does come down to it. They do it the four buys, couple vandals, phantoms in hand. And it looks like they're going for the mid play here, trying to get a bit of info there and a little bit. You could, but you need to rotate quick Ooh. as ever. Gets a first. Gets almost a transfer. Gets nothing. Yep. <coughs> Damage was well done at the very least. So it does give his team, you know, it's a, a, a sort of a head start at least on the retake there. Now, b side has been taken, and Glenn Waverly, they're going to stick the plant, although that's a really good paint shot lob. It should be good, be good to, to do some damage as Tobo gets another onto high shot. Oh, dear me. They were back and forth right now, but make no mistake, Glenn Waverly, there are... Okay, they were on the back foot, but now numbers are equal as Happy gets that kill. Okay, this post plant's looking pretty good. These, these three players at three separate angles, locking everything down. Another flash of guiding light. Happy Goldbar gets that kill. Iconic cleans up. Match point now. Glenn Waverly, they have Hoppers Crossing on the ropes. Match they point. absolutely dominant. They were absolutely dominant through this game. They won six rounds in a row initially. Lost the three rounds, brought it back, and then won three more. And now... Hoppers Crossing have to win nine rounds in a row just to force overtime, just for the chance to win in overtime. And it looks like it might be too far gone because currently yeah. they have no money left in the bank. If they are forcing every single penny they have left, then they are making a mistake because it's on the line as of right now. And it looks like they're going to go for the A retake. Poor Sky's there. Oh. Gets a quick dink, but... It's going to be healed up. Is who little damage from that range with the Spectre. And mm. now they're on the A site. It is all of theirs for the taking. The plant is down. And the retake is most certainly on. A 4v5. Just look at, look at the Jet and Breach. The Flash and Dash combo, right? And it's just High Shot is just allowing Triple Seven to get these kills. Uh, granted, he didn't shoot anything there. High Shot has, the one, has to be the one to get those kills. But make no mistake right now. It's the last player. Smebbles. Another Rolling Thunder. He does dodge it. No, he doesn't dodge it at all. Smebbles. Left, right. Good night. Good luck. Okay, that's a good pump. Takes a high shot. Good, 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 good for a second. Well, the manager, I'm not too sure where he managed to hop behind him, but still just slices and dices him up. 13-3. Another very commanding lead and win as well for Glenn Waverly. Yeah. By the way, this one dipped behind when he like looked away. Breach got the pick, and then in that split second, jumped on top of the box and went mm. behind him. But of course, Glenn Waverly were dominant throughout. Um, second seed against third seed is not expected at all we'd expect from there we expect quite quite a tight game but yeah overall they had the momentum early on they kept it going through and for every single kill they got every single round they got hoppers crossing just didn't have an answer and 13 to 3 was that final scoreline high shot as you can see 20 and 9 all the mm. kills all double digits all positive and really tobo and arguably poi would really step up to the plate the rest of them just didn't quite have it in them to take those picks and the timeline as you can see, six rounds in a row. They brought three back, four, of course, Hoppers Crossing, but then they closed at the last three from Glenn Waverly. They won the pistol, and they went the clean sweep from there to get the 13-3. to three. Yeah, and of course, the MVP of this game, it has to be high shot, you know. Him as, the, him as the battle breach, on the on the attack, right, him using his flashes to basically open sights up and allow his uh, team, team teammates to run on and get those kills, that's great. But then you switch over to the defense, Single-handedly, he locked down the B-side. That one round was fantastic. He used all the flashes and has got kill after kill after kill. You don't usually expect Breach to, to be playing off his own flashes as he's not quite built for that, but High Shot made it work. And as well, even all the way to the final round there with uh, 777 over towards screens, which by the way, shout out to 777 as well. Being a duelist, he's getting into those aggressive angles for his team. He's doing what a Jet should be doing. But in the final round with High Shot as backup to flash him through, granted the first one, it wasn't really good for a kill, but the got some intel and it was a trade so high shot mvp clearly for glenn waverly and this will now put them into the second seed i believe yes it does they will swap places from those ones there and just from that one there um actually uh excuse me hoppers crossing we might even go down to fourth seed because there was three of them um all tied with a scoreline of five might come down the head-to-heads as well but definitely second seed there for glenn waverly and Honestly, that roster, that game right there, they could even be taking it up to the first seed to try and take that one overall mm. from there. So, no worries at that stakes 
at all. So yeah. yeah. Well, look, Melbourne High School. I haven't seen them play just yet. I'm sure they are decent to to be the first seed, at least the first on the scoreboard right now. But guys, game two, that's done and dusted. There's still one more game coming up uh, at seven o'clock, which will be. Let me read it. Melbourne real High School, soon. the one you get to see. Oh, and great. Catholic Regional College. So Melbourne yep. High School's, of course, top seed. Catholic Regional College on tenth seed. So. Oh dear. Ooh, well, well okay, bit. well, let's not say anything just yet. The game, it's still yet to, to happen. And bear in mind, it's only like literally one or two wins that are separating these schools from all the way top through the first seed towards this, the 10th seed. So, guys, we'll be back after a short breather. Once again, this is Meta HSC by Valorant. I'm Digital. Joining me is Potato Fries, wrong way, actually. And this is sponsored by Optus and Torrance University, Australia.